So uh, what I'd like to talk to you t today about is basically what vaccines really are. So we've talked a lot uh, today in theory about how vaccines work, about vaccine policy, about fears surrounding vaccines. And I think a lot of these things, uh, when you really boil it down, stems to the fact that a lot of us don't really understand what vaccines are beyond you know, some unknown substance that we suck out of a vial into a needle and then stick into our arms. And so in understanding, even at a very basic level, the immunology and the biology surrounding how vaccines are made and how vaccines work, I think that a lot of the fears surrounding vaccination uh, can probably be alleviated. So I don't have any relationships with any pharmaceutical companies. This is one of the things that a lot of people are worried about uh, with vaccines, so nobody's paying me, sadly. <laughs> um, so to really understand how vaccines work, really, we need to understand how the immune system works. And at its most basic level, the immune system works by recognizing shapes. So during development, the cells in our bodies that are components of the immune system learn what shapes are present in our bodies and they learn to either ignore or tolerate those shapes so that when cells are swimming around in our blood and they encounter our own shapes, they don't mount an immune response and kill our own cells. However, the shapes that aren't part of our bodies are become targets then for our immune system. And so the immune system really develops to differentiate the shapes that should be in us from the shapes that shouldn't be in us. And the shapes that shouldn't be in us are often derived from things that are dangerous to us, like pathogens, so bacteria, viruses, or parasites. So the cells that we talk about uh, primarily in vaccinology are B cells and T cells. And these cells form the backbone of what we call the adaptive immune system. Uh, B cells are the cells that are responsible for making antibodies, which probably a lot of you have heard of, whereas T cells are responsible for killing the cells that become infected with bacteria or viruses in order to prevent the spread of diseases. Um, What's interesting about the adaptive immune system is that it has this really unique property that we call immunological memory. And this is the concept that's really central to the whole idea of vaccination. So immunological memory means that once your immune system has seen a shape that it knows is not your own, it remembers that shape, hopefully for the rest of your life. So the first time you see that shape, that comes from a bacteria or a virus, your immune system realizes it's not from your body and that it might be dangerous. But it takes time for the immune system to mobilize and to kill or destroy or eliminate that shape. However, after it's done that, it's basically like keeping an army on reserve. You now have an immune system that's poised to recognize that shape so that the next time you encounter this potentially dangerous thing, you can eliminate it very quickly before you ever have a chance to become sick. So this is basically the backbone of how and why vaccines work. So when we talk about vaccines in a very general hand wavy way, the way that you and I experience vaccines usually is by, you know, seeing a doctor holding a needle and then jabbing it into our arm. And, you know, we're scared because we have no idea what's in that needle, what the vaccines are made of. And this is, I think, a big issue because not all vaccines are the same. There are a lot of different flavors that vaccines come in. So, as I said, the immune system essentially works by recognizing shapes. And so the shapes that we want our immune system to know about are the shapes that come from agents that cause us harm, like bacteria and viruses. And there's a lot of ways that we can teach the immune system what shapes are bad. One way that's a very common and perhaps the oldest way is to take the pathogen that causes illness, kill it, and then expose our immune system to that. That's essentially what 
uh, the original Salk and Jenner vaccines did. They, they took a virus and they exposed a dead version of that virus or a different version of that virus or an attenuated version of that virus to the immune system to teach the immune system what the really bad agent looks like. As technologies have advanced, we've learned about a lot of other ways that we can do this. So now we have vaccines that come from pieces of virus or bacteria or parasite that we make in the lab that are just very, very small components of what the actual pathogen looks like. And an understanding of this is really central to understanding why vaccines are safe and why arguments suggesting that vaccines aren't natural are really ill-advised. Because if you continue on that line of logic, then you have to accept that infections are natural. And so many people who are anti-vaccine are anti-vaccine because they say natural immunity that I get through getting infected is much better than what a vaccine can do. Well, what we're doing in vaccination is basically giving you that natural substance without the possibility of you becoming sick to have to gain the immunity. And so it's in understanding how vaccines are made and how they work, I think that we sort of pull back the curtain on a lot of the um, logical inconsistencies that promote arguments against vaccination. So this is just uh, a table of the um, current publicly funded vaccine schedule in Ontario. And there's a lot of information here, but the point I want to make is that among all of these different vaccines that are present on this table, they all come in different flavors. Some of these vaccines are live attenuated, which means that we take the pathogen that normally causes illness, remove its ability to be dangerous to us, and then expose the immune system to this essentially crippled virus or bacterium. And in this way, our immune system learns what that virus or bacterium looks like, mounts an immune response, remembers that pathogen, but we never have to get sick. Other vaccines are pieces of the virus or bacteria that are the critical shapes that we know are important for the immune system providing protection. And so in certain cases, we've been able to just purify those shapes or those proteins or in certain cases sugars that are important that the immune system recognizes on these bugs and give them in a purified manner. And so this prevents people from having to be exposed to all of the other nasty stuff that these bugs might carry. So contrary to being unnatural, they're in fact very natural. You just remove all of the junk that may be toxic otherwise. So how do vaccines protect us? I've alluded to this a little bit already. Vaccines work by teaching the immune system what pathogens look like without us having to become ill for that lesson to be learned. Okay, you know, you can teach your child that, you know, not to play around fire, but you don't want to have to do that by throwing them in the fire the first time. This is analogous to the way that vaccines work. And this is accomplished by exposing the immune system to killed or damaged or pieces of the pathogens that make us sick. Another thing that people often hear and worry about in vaccines are these things called adjuvants. And adjuvants is a very unusual word. I don't think there's any other form in which this is really used. Um, but this is something that causes a lot of concern because these are seemingly unnatural compounds that are added to vaccines and there's a lot of worry about toxicity. What adjuvants really are are substances that are added to vaccines in order to enhance their ability to provide protection. And an important um, attribute of adjuvants is that in many cases, by adding an adjuvant to the vaccine, we reduce the amount of pathogen that we have to give to people because the adjuvant makes us respond better to smaller amounts of these pieces of pathogens. Um, in Canada, there are only three adjuvants that are approved, all of which are um, aluminum-based salts. And these are innocuous compounds. They're not much different from, you know, the salt that you eat, really, other than the fact that they contain aluminum. Uh, the most common of which most of you have probably heard of is called alum. 
And the way that these aluminum-based salts work is essentially by making the immune system recognize the pathogen more potently. So it makes the immune system think, basically, that the infection is more or that the exposure is more severe and maybe a real infection when in fact it's not. So they don't make you sick, but they make your immune system take what you're giving it seriously without you having to become sick. So in order to give sort of a little case study about all of the misperceptions that surround vaccines, I thought I would use the flu vaccine as an example. And I think what's really important to disclose before I even get started is that most people are not truly anti-vaccination. Most people have legitimate questions about how vaccines work, want the best for themselves and for their children, and the misperceptions surrounding vaccination uh, are complicated. It's not that people who are anti-vaccine or hesitant to get vaccines are stupid. It's that this stuff is nuanced, and without knowing these nuances, it's very easy to become confused. So influenza virus, first of all, is caused by a virus and not a bacterium. And influenza causes infections of the upper respiratory tract, so the nose, the nasopharynx, and the lung primarily. The common symptoms of flu are things like runny noses, sore throats, coughing, difficulty breathing, muscle aches, and fever. So these are things we're all pretty familiar with. In Canada, the vaccines that we give out annually to protect against flu come in two flavors. The one that most of us will be familiar with is the flu shot because that's what most adults get. A lot of people don't get the flu shot, I hear, because they tell me that they never get the flu until they get the flu shot, and whenever they get the flu shot, they end up getting the flu. And I'm going to convince you that this is impossible. The reason that this is impossible is that the flu shot is what we call a split virus vaccine. So this is what flu looks like in a stylized way. And what we do to teach the immune system what flu looks like is essentially blow it up into a million tiny little pieces and then inject it into our arms. So the flu virus that you get in the vaccine isn't infectious anymore, and there's no way it can cause infection because it's just pieces of what used to be the actual flu. In addition to that, I just told you that flu causes infections in your lung, and we all know that we get the flu shot in our arm. The flu, even if we put the real virus in your arm, can't spread from your arm to your lung. Um, this is a moot point because these vaccines are rigorously tested to make sure that there's not one single infectious flu particle left in the preparations, but it's an important point to consider. The second type of flu vaccine that we give to children is called the live attenuated vaccine, and Mark talked a little bit, or alluded at least a little bit, um, about this vaccine earlier. This is a virus um, or a vaccine strategy that's commonly employed in other scenarios where we essentially change the flu so that it can't cause infection anymore, but it still looks like the whole virus to our immune system. And the reason we do this is because we get really good immunity to this kind of vaccine because it looks the most like the real thing. So given that the immune system recognizes shapes, as I told you before, the closer you get to the real thing, typically the better your immunity is. The other thing that's uh, a common pervasive misconception about the flu shot is that when people say they get the flu, sometimes they mean that they got nasty diarrhea or vomiting. The stomach flu is not influenza. The reason that it's called the stomach flu is some aberration that happened um, that contributes to a lot of misperceptions, uh, but basically is a misnomer. So the flu shot that we get prevents influenza virus infection. The stomach flu is caused by all sorts of other nasty viruses that infect your intestine, and the flu shot will do nothing against those. So if you get the flu shot and then get diarrhea, it's bad luck, you got something else. And the flu shot was never made to protect you against that. Finally, when we get the influenza shot is, you know, in the, in the sort of early fall before winter. And in winter, a lot of nasty viruses are floating around that make us sick, one of which is the flu. However, 
Vaccines are sort of an unusual occurrence in our life. You don't think about driving back and forth to work every day and what associations that might have with things that happen to you later. But it just so happens that at the time we get the flu shot, there's also lots of other really nasty bugs that tend to make us sick more frequently, like the common cold. Symptoms, when you compare the flu and the common cold to the average person, often seem very similar. You get runny noses, you know, you have coughing sometimes, you know, you don't get fever as frequently, but you still feel lousy. And if you're, you know, average Joe feeling lousy, you might not know whether you have a fever or not. You just know that you feel sick. But the flu vaccine isn't going to protect you against any of these other boatload of respiratory viruses that cause similar infections. Uh, flu is particularly nasty, which is why we vaccinate against it. But there are lots of other things that can give you flu-like symptoms that aren't flu. And so this is a very tricky and difficult to understand reason why people think they might get the flu after the flu shot. That's not true. And you don't have to be stupid to make this mistake. It's just that, you know, these things happen, they're nuanced, and people may not be aware that there are these other agents which the flu shot does nothing against, but that just because of proximity and time seem to be related. Finally, there are some people who get the flu shot and really do get the flu. But it's not from the shot. It's just bad luck. The reason for this is because of the way the immune system works. So the first time when you go in to get the flu vaccine, we try and roll this thing out in the early fall before the flu season actually hits. The reason for that is because the immune system needs to learn. So the first time you learned your times tables, you're really lousy at them. Or maybe you weren't, but I certainly was. Um, and the reason for that is because, you know, you don't just learn something the first time you see it. The immune system needs time to learn and recognize what these pathogens look like. And the first time it sees a new agent, this timing takes sort of two weeks to a month before the immune system has really got, gotten the idea down pat. But the second time that this, the immune system sees this thing, or you know, after you've practiced your times tables at home for a month, then you know them off by heart. The same thing happens with the immune system. So if you get your flu shot late in the season, or if the flu season starts early, sometimes what happens is you'll get the shot, a week later you've gotten the flu, and it's just because there hasn't been sufficient time for the flu shot to provide you with protection before you actually get infected. So that's why it's important to get your vaccine as early as possible in the season, because otherwise um, you may get an, inf an infection before the vaccine can really work. The second reason is that with flu, this is unique among vaccines. Sometimes the virus changes before or during the time that vaccine production happens, and that's what happened this year. So this year, the predominant strain of flu that was circulating changed in between the time that we started making the vaccine and the time that we started giving it to people. And after that pipeline has started, there's no way to go back and change it. So again, this is an issue of bad, bad luck, essentially. And a lot of research, including my own, is trying to address this problem so that we can have a type of flu vaccine where this bad luck doesn't happen anymore. Um, and finally, a lot of people today have talked about errors in causation versus association, so I won't go into this in any detail. But basically, uh, just coming back to the point that, you know, when you get a vaccine, this is an unusual event. And when two unusual events happen in close proximity, our brains are wired to put them together. So if you get a vaccine and then you win a million dollars, you're unlikely to think that the vaccine caused you to win a million dollars because for all of us, this is obvious. But if you get a vaccine and then you get sick, you know, you don't have to be stupid um, or naive to think that the vaccine might have caused you to be sick. These are two medical issues. The vaccine is supposed to be preventing infection. So it's not, we shouldn't react angrily at people who make these misjudgments. And the only way I think to really explain to people why these things happen is to walk them through the situations that would make them think that sometimes this is the case. However, if you win a million dollars and get sick, you're unlikely to think that the million dollars made you sick, right? So it works both ways. Uh, and with that, I'll wrap up and I'd be happy to take any questions.